Hi everybody! It's the end of the month so it's time to show you all the pictures I coloured during March of 2023 and I'll be starting with this one, Colouring Book of Shadows by Amy Cesari. Now the theme that I picked for the month of March was crystals and gemstones because during the filming of a previous video I realised I hardly coloured any of them at all and I didn't really know how to colour them. So having that theme picked for the month of March my first step was to figure out how to colour crystals and for that I used this book and I picked out a I picked out a nice simple page with pictures of crystals on it. This one you might recognise from my tutorial on how to colour the crystals, explaining the method I came up with of visualising the light coming down and kind of entering the crystal and being inside it, which seemed to work for me. Um, this is the one that I coloured on my own in the morning. I to figure out the method and like visualise what I was doing. I coloured that one. And then on the tutorial I coloured the one at the top which is it's essentially the same because the page is the same both ways around. But this is the one that I coloured on the tutorial. Get her in frame, there we go. Um, for the orangey kind of crystals I used Arteza pencils I think. Um, for the rest of them I might use Castle Art Gold for that one. And I think maybe castle art, just normal castle art for those ones. But if you want to check the materials, they are in the tutorial video. So if you want to be absolutely sure of those. And of course a white gel pen to go around all the edges. And that was the first one I'd done to figure out actually how to colour crystals, which is a good first step when I'm going to spend all month doing them. So that's the first picture I coloured in. Colouring Book of Shadows by Amy Cesari. The next one I finished is by Jasmine Becky Griffith from the Fantasy Art Adventure Colouring Book. And I coloured, I coloured this one, just move my marker, I coloured this one, which is the Angel with Emeralds. And for this one I actually looked up Jasmine's original artwork for this picture and I used the same colours as she did. Mine might be slightly different shades but the colours, yeah, the, the theory is the same. Um, I think my background might be slightly greener, I use more greener greys than she did. But um, for this one I used Super Tips as watercolour as a base for most of it. Uh, her clothes and her wings, her hair, um, the background behind these trees, that's all Super Tips with watercolour. Her skin has a base of marker and uh, the crystals, I don't think the crystals had any base, they're just yeah, they're just pencil. You can see they're my marker base. So yeah, that's what I came up with that. With that, I did my base and then I worked on top with I think. I think that was mainly castle arts that one, but I could be wrong. Is is either castle arts or a teaser? That's basically what I use. Um, there's white gel pen. There's white gel pen to go around her wings there. Outline the feathers and to go around the crystals uh, for highlights in her eyes. And there's a gold. I think that's gold sharpie a few little details on her dress. Um, so yeah, that's the second one I coloured. That's by Jasmine Becky Griffith from the Fantasy Art Colouring Book. The next one I did is from Colouring Heaven Halloween Special, issue 66. This is for a challenge on the Friends of Colouring Heaven Facebook group and it's also a tutorial video that I made showing you how I shade or colour using a black biro and cross hatching. Because the challenge actually was on the Facebook group to colour a picture using cross hatching, and I quite like doing this. I've done it before on a few pictures, you might have seen them. So, yeah, this is the one that I did. I coloured her face quickly with, I think I did I give that a marker base? Yeah, I gave that a marker base and just shaded it really quickly with pencils. And then the rest of it is just black biro, black biro pen, um, showing you how I did all this cross hatching, which turned out quite well. Um, I was going to go try and get around to colouring colouring her in and treating it as a kind of grayscale, but I didn't get around to that, I'm afraid. But that would be a really interesting project. Might have to get onto that next month. But yeah, I was quite pleased with how she turned out. That is by Dawn Davidson, Winifred by Dawn Davidson. That is from Colouring Heaven Halloween Special, issue 66. The next one I coloured in is another Colouring Heaven. This is Alice in Wonderland Special. And the one I coloured is this one. Now this one had a really busy background going on. There was loads of little gems kind of floating around, lots of playing cards, loads of stuff. And I didn't fancy colouring all that. You, you know what I'm like with repetitive things. I, I just don't like colouring them. So what I did, I, I drew, around, uh, drew around a plate to get this circle. And then I covered all the rest of this with a paint marker. This is the paint marker here. Uh, I can show you. Yep, yeah, there we go. 
Dallaroni acrylic paint marker in gold and I just went give that a couple of coats over the background I tried to make it look a little bit textured which I thought would hopefully help to blend in all the black lines I was trying to cover up there and that seemed to work quite well um, there's a marker base yep for her hair and for the background you can see there I've done some collage paper collage and what that's for is for the backs of the cards here. So there was some sort of complicated pattern going on there that I just wasn't in the mood for at the time. So I just cut out the, the space where the pattern was and I stuck my paper behind it and used that as the back for the cards. Um, there's gold, gold Sharpie, I think, for these bits. There's some um, glitter glue. That's Dovecraft glitter glue on her eyelids. Can we make that sparkle? There we go. Yeah, she's got gold gl glittery eyeshadow going on there. I think I might have gone around those with a gold gel pen. Um, this is self-adhesive kind of ribbon. It's sort of strips of it was stuck on a piece of card. You just peel it off and stick it down. So I stuck that up the top just to fill the space really and put some little jewels on there. And yeah, that, that one was really fun actually. I do like colouring dark skin down, so it's super fun. Um, so there we go. That one is from Colouring Heaven Alice in Wonderland Special by Eva Nikunin. I don't think I mentioned that, but yeah, it is Eva Nikunin, that one. Okay, the next one is another tutorial video. <laughs> um, this is for one that was requested to show you how I colour my kind of pinky peach clouds. And this is the one that I... This is the one that I did it in. This is Spirit Animals by Hannah Colson. These circles were originally blank behind these pair here, the girl and her swan. But I drew in some clouds to resemble the, the whip that I was asked to demonstrate. So I tried to draw in some clouds, basically the same, and show, show how I did those use, using the same colours and everything. And then I just, I was inspired. I went on and finished the whole the whole thing. I think I did this one with Castle Arts pencils. I did the whole thing with Castle Arts pencils in the end because that's what I used for the clouds. That's what I demonstrated. So I carried on and finished the whole thing with Castle Arts pencils. Um, I didn't really want to put too much around the edge because I wanted the focus to be on the main images there. So I just went around the edge with a little bit of my chalk pastel kind of parchment style background. And then these little kind of splashes, dots we've got going on there. That's coffee, that's instant coffee. Just dissolved in water and kind of splashed on for a bit more uh, kind of messy parchment effect around the edges. Um, so yeah, there are some little, little tiny kind of pearl crystals stuck on for these tiny little gems here. Those are stick on kind of self adhesive pearl gems for the smallest, for the smallest little gems. Yeah, there's some on her crown as well there. There's white gel pen and silver gel pen and the rest as far as I remember that's Castle Arts gold pencils. There we go. That one was really quite fun. It did take quite a while being a double page spread but yeah I'm really happy with the way I got them both matching. I had to be a bit brave with her hair colour because uh, I need to needed to bring in the same colour that was on his ribbon and that, that was the way I figured out how to do that. And yeah, I tried to keep the light kind of in the middle so they're both facing in kind of towards the sunset and that's what's lighting up these clouds, a nice pink colour. So yeah, I, I was really pleased with that one when it was done. I, I really like this gold effect. That's the first time I tried to figure out a gold effect with Castle Arts gold pencils and I was quite happy with the way that turned out. All right, that is from Spirit Animals by Hannah Carlson. The next one I went on to, a little bit of a break, this is getting away from my uh, crystals and gemstones kind of theme. This is The Way Home by Morgan O'Brien and this is a book I do eventually want to finish and my son is going on at me to finish this book as well so every time I'm, I don't know what to colour he says colour the Baby Yoda book. So this is what he did. I, I didn't know what to colour after I finished my double page spread. You know what it's like being in between pictures and he just said colour the Baby Yoda book. So I did <laughs> and uh, where are we? This is the one that I coloured. I'll probably need to bring us in a bit closer there. So there we go. This is from yeah, The Way Home, Morgan O'Brien. And this is the image from the cover. So I tried to copy the same kind of colour palette. Obviously mine isn't quite as dark. My colours were a lot brighter. This is uh, done with Xenicolor pencils. 
which worked okay on this this kind of Amazon paper. The colours laid down, but you couldn't really layer with them. You were lucky if you got more than two layers, to be perfectly honest. So so yeah, they're all right as long as you don't require to do lots of layers. But I was just doing just blending more than layering really just trying to copy the cover just blocks of color and uh, I got a bit carried away and ended up drawing my own version of all these little plants down here I drew my own little jungle at the bottom another little beastie bug and tried to color those the same kind of colors as the picture which worked quite well and then the, the top looked a bit plain so I copied a few of the stars up there as well and uh, went around those with a silver gel pen there is a little bit of white gel pen as well for a few little highlights, again copied from the cover. And around the little dragonfly beastie's wings has got some white gel pen on there as well. So yeah, that, that one is The Way Home by Morgan O'Brien. Next is the one from my colour along. Most of this is on film, I think. If anybody wants to see how I actually did it, the, the materials I used and all that kind of stuff. This is The Women of Tua, a fantasy colouring book by Lisa Johanna, or Johanna, I think it's Johanna. But yeah, um, this is the one that I picked to colour for St. Patrick's Day. It's the same image that's on the cover, so I wanted to keep the same kind of you know, Celtic kind of colour scheme going on. And this is what we came up with. This is my lady. And... Doing this one as well, I wanted to test out the Castle Arts and the Arteza pencils on the Amazon paper. And I think the Arteza pencils ended up working better. Um, they tended to layer a bit better and just, yeah, they just felt better to me. So, yeah, her skin was Arteza and her hair, I think. Whereas the crystals, these crystals behind her and the ones in their jewellery, those were cas Castle Arts. I did the gold, the same gold combination that I used in Hannah Carlson. I used that for the uh, gold for her jewellery because it's more of a greeny gold, which I thought would contrast to her hair, lovely red hair. Um, yeah, and uh, this, I went for the frame, I went back to the Arteza pencils because, as I said, I found they worked a heck of a lot better on the paper. I was having a really bad time with my tablet trying to film the frame part of the colour along sort of tutorial but I think I did manage to get enough film done to show you how I did each element like the mushrooms these little glowy mushrooms the leaves everything like that the rocks which all worked out quite well especially considering um this background here I did with Crayola Super Tip by scribbling on the plate lifting up the colour and with a damp brush and painting it on um, it, that didn't quite go according to plan, it ended up bleeding across a few of these edges here so we had to cover that up but I think that works quite well, you can barely tell that we had a little happy accident there so yeah, that's my St Patrick's Day picture from The Women of Tua by Lisa Johanna. Next we have this one which is actually a PDF, a free download from Anastasia Ellie Calderaver. And if, if I can find the link, I will put that down in the description in case anybody wants to um, wants to call him in as well. He was really quite fun to do. I tried to make him look like a, a bronze dragon with the blue crystals. And the crystals are supposed to be sort of glowing away there, shining onto him, giving him a blue tinge to his scales and stuff. I think this one might have... I think it was normal castle arts and castle arts gold, a kind of a mixture going on, I think, with the white gel pen, if I remember right. Yep, the original plan was to make him look as if he was in a dark cave with the crystals shining away, but when it came down to it, I really didn't want to colour that whole page in grey and black. So I did the bare minimum around the edges so that you can see that the crystals are you can see that the crystals are glowing there. But I really didn't want to colour the whole page, so I didn't. You don't have to if you don't want to, right? <laughs> I think it works quite well as is, actually. I don't think he really needs much more of a background, to be perfectly honest with you. But there he is. That's my crystal dragon from Anastasia Ellie Calderaver. Next, we're going back to Colouring Heaven. This is Creatures of the Night Special by Sarah Richter. And this one was a bit of a labour of love towards the end. Um, doing the main subject, yeah, that, that was really cool. But when it came to the background, oh, that started to get a little bit tedious. But anyway, here we are. This is, a, what's he called? This is Moon Queen by Sarah Richter. And this one was a grayscale. You can see grayscaled like this. And I just worked on top of that with my Arteza and Castle Arts pencils. Um, there's some white gel pen as well 
Um, again, my castle has gold <laughs> kind of combination for the gold. Um, I did change the, the bottom of it here. I just got a bit fed up with doing galaxy effect with the pencils because it, it looks really good, but it's very tedious and very slow. So down the bottom, I changed it a little bit. I just colored over it and ate these kind of clouds at the bottom and drew those in and uh, yeah, tried to give the, the moon, the crescent moons have sort of a glow effect, which was kind of indicated by the gray scale, but I think that worked out a lot better than I expected it to actually. Um, I did actually look up the original art and in the original art, these were glowing orange. So obviously mine are a different color, but I took the same kind of idea and, uh, and ran with that and tried to make them look as if they're glowing. And I really, really enjoyed coloring this skull. It doesn't hardly look as if it's colored very much at all but yeah I really enjoyed coloring him oh, I love skulls and I think this worked out really well and uh, yeah my gems are the crystals and this little kind of turquoise turquoise gemstone she's got in her headband I'm presuming it's a it's a she because it is moon queen but yeah I'm really pleased with how she came out though she was very labor intensive <laughs> many many podcasts were listened to there coloring that sky but yeah super pleased with how it came out and also I did a little bit of work on a very long standing whip in the back of this one if you remember from my coloring book collection videos this one this one is one of my whips that's been going on for ages and I worked back into this one today and this is where I did try doing cross hatching with biro and then colouring on top. I don't know if you can see down the bottom there. Yep, there we go. That's a cross hatched with the biro and then I coloured on top because I wanted to have very kind of dark and muted colours. I wanted to be sort of in a silhouette but not quite because she's standing in the in the mouth of the cave there. And I was quite happy with how that started coming along. So I'm going to carry along in that kind of vein, I think, um, shading it and then working on top. Um, I've started on her hair there with the biro shading and yep and I want to do some sort of colourful sunset or sunrise or something in the background and that should work out quite well I think but yeah I'm happy with how those are coming along. That is Creatures of the Night special Colouring Heaven by Sarah Richter. Next we move on to a little cutie special Colouring Heaven. This one is by Daria Sakisoy and this one is another kind of demonstration tutorial kind of video still up on the channel this one I was asked to show how I use watercolors on the coloring heaven paper and this is how uh, we turned out and she has been flattening under some heavy books for quite a few days now and there are some some wrinkles quite a few wrinkles along the edges there they, they flatten but you can sort of see them with the sun shining on them the paper is fairly flat but it does make that lovely kind of wrinkly noise, which is nice. And um, yeah, that's what I did do for the video on how to use watercolours on Colouring Heaven paper. She's all watercolours. And I tried to paint her kind of in the style of Christine Karen, just using Christine Karen as a sort of inspiration, just for the colour palettes and the kind of idea that her skin doesn't have to be flesh toned. It can be any colour, really. She's a fairy queen, so yep. Um, there is some gouache paint. This is gold gouache for her crown there. Um, the rest of it is WH Smith watercolours with white gel pen. And this one is a Winsor & Newton. The orange is a Winsor & Newton little orange watercolour. Um, so yeah, kind of happy with how she turned out. She has flattened pretty well. You can sort of still see the wrinkles, but yeah, I don't mind that too much. It's not watercolour paper. <laughs> you don't expect miracles. But yeah, the paper does hold up pretty well, as long as you're careful with the water and as long as you don't mind a few wrinkles around the edges. Well, there we go. That is by Daria Sakisoy from Little Cutie Special. The next one I finished was actually a whip from last month, from my sci-fi month. And I did say I wanted to <laughs> finish her off. This is Coloring Heaven Steampunk Special by Matt and Dawn Davidson. And the one that I, yeah, that's that's the picture. That's the one that I coloured. And I printed her off onto brown paper. I coloured her with the Giotto Still Novo Skin Tone Pencils. Along with a black and a white. I think white was polychromos, the black might have been Arteza or Castle Arts Gold because I wanted to get quite a dark black going on. But yeah, there she is. 
another one that's really really detailed. I tried to do the same kind of effect in my sky that was on the skull picture because I really liked how that turned out. So I tried to kind of freehand one or freestyle one with no grayscale in the background to help me out but I'm pretty pleased with how she did turn out in the end. There is white gel pen for highlights. The rest of it, Giotto, skin tone pencils with a black and a white. And I'm really happy that she's finished. <laughs> she was very, very detailed and I kept getting lost in the details and having a having to put it down for a bit and then come back to her. But yeah, super pleased that she's finished. Really happy with her. And she is by Matt Davidson, I think. That one. Okay, that is from Steampunk Special Coloring Heaven. That one was by Matt Davidson. The last one that I actually finished this month is from the newest issue of Coring Heaven. This is the Gothic Beauty Special and it's another one that I printed out onto toned paper. There's the picture and that's the picture that I coloured in. And this is what I came up with. And for this one I wanted to try and make it look as if the crystal was glowing, glowing blue. And I wanted to keep the rest of the picture fairly monochrome to just kind of highlight that glowing crystal, which I think worked quite well. It didn't take too long actually uh, doing that. Um, this one was, I think, Castle Arts Gold again. Um, this kind of ultramarine blue is a Arteza Expert. Uh, everything else is Castle Arts Gold and this white gel pen. And the white is Polychromos White. So, yeah, kind of happy with how she's turned out. I'm not sure I quite got the effect that I was going for, looking as if that crystal was glowing, but it was a fun experiment. I do love to play with the light. Yeah, it's, it's a really fun thing to do, playing with the light, how your picture is lit up. That one is by Alchemy Carter from Colouring Heaven Gothic Beauty Special. And I do have one whip still on the go, which I'm hoping to finish off in the next month. But please don't hold me to it, because sometimes I just don't get around to things. I get too excited about other projects and never come back. This is Symphony of Cute Animals by Kinoko Agusa. And the one that I started is this one. There we go, there's two little mice with their amethyst crystals. And this one was using Brute Funnel pencils, because I got a set for a really good price on Amazon. So I grabbed those up and I thought I'd try them out on this picture. And yep, they're working really well, I think. Um, and the background, background I've done with gouache paint and trying to make it look as if everything here is kind of on a tablecloth and then the wall is kind of plaster. I'm not quite sure I've got the effect going yet, but I'm going to work on that one a little bit more, work into that and see what we can come up with. Um, oh yeah, white gel pen I forgot to mention on the crystals and those, these kind of hyacinth flowers. But yeah, pleased with how those are going. I really like the way this, uh, this kind of iron is it on the scale has come out that's turned out looking really well i had to draw in the rest of this bulb here kind of inside the glass because the glass was just it didn't have anything showing inside it and if it's meant to be a glass then it would have so i had to show in the rest draw in the rest of the bulb and a few roots kind of dangling down which i wasn't quite sure would work but yeah looking at it again it's not going too badly so yeah i want to carry on and try and finish that one with just flowers left to do which kind of leads on into my theme that I've picked for next month. My partner suggested the theme for next month and I thought it was a pretty good idea so I'm going to go with it because April the 22nd is actually Earth Day so for April my theme is going to be a natural kind of environmental theme. Um, plants, animals, anything kind of environmental along those lines, anything I can kind of wrangle to fit into that theme somehow. Plants and leaves and trees and stuff are really not something I colour very often and trees definitely not, I really don't like colouring trees so I'll have to see what I can come up with for that, should be quite interesting seeing what I can find to fit in with that theme. So yeah, that's all I coloured during March of 2023 so I hope you enjoyed watching this, take care everyone, see you in future videos, bye!